Hey everybody, this is Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat. I'm talking today with David. Hello. Hi, pleased to be here. Thanks for inviting me. So David, for folks that don't know you, who are you, where are you, and what do you do? Okay, so David Musgrave. I'm based in Perth, Western Australia. I am an MVP for Business Solutions, um, in particular the, the Microsoft Dynamics GP product. Um, and uh, I've been... Uh, an MVP since uh, 2015. Um, that was uh, basically I had to wait a year after I left Microsoft before I could gain MVP status. Yep. Now I know that uh, that's not always true. I've, I've known a couple of people that left and very quickly got moved in, but I think that the practice is generally that it's a year. That's what I was told when I left Microsoft as well. Yes. Um, yeah, I got told that uh, there was a lot of calls for me to become an MVP because before I left Microsoft, while I was still there, I was treated as an MVP. Uh, I was an honorary MVP with the with the MVPs and with everybody else. Um, and uh, so when I left Microsoft, they you know people called for me to be an MVP, and the the it basically came back that it's based on my last twelve months of, of activity in the community. And therefore, I have to be out of Microsoft for for twelve months. Yeah. So, what's your what's your focus area? So, well, basically, um, I write add on products for Microsoft Dynamics GP, and I've been involved with the 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 Great Plains product um, since about ninety four. Yeah, I remember when. Uh, so, when that acquisition, you know, was, was discussed, when all that happened, and teams started to and i worked with one team that sent people up to do some interaction with the product teams up in north dakota i still have never it's one of the the five states in the u.s that i've never been to uh because <laughs> other than since i'm no longer with microsoft other than visiting the uh uh the dynamics teams uh you know up in region there was never any other reason to go there the there's probably only two reasons to go to fargo actually i know i'll make it three the people are lovely so um, I have always loved going up to Fargo and catching up with the the team. I have a lot of good friends there that are, uh, you know, were Great Plains or Microsoft employees or still are. Um, but pretty well, I suppose there's another reason is the university. There's a university there. Mm -hmm. There's the, um, uh, if you're involved in farming, they often have a lot of farming conferences up there because this is the, the Great Plains. Yeah. Um and there's a lot of farming related things. And then it's the second largest uh, Microsoft campus now. So outside of uh, Redmond, it's the biggest campus. I didn't realize that. Wow. Yeah. And uh, they, they have a lot of other stuff there that is not Great Plains. I know they have a lot of office team teams there now. And uh, they have other business solution teams there as well for, for AX or F&O um, and so there's I, a lot I that still happens also, there. Like, uh, there's also sales and a lot of the, the uh, partner support, like the tele support um, for the like telemanaged um, partners, like those folks are out of that region as well. Um, I, I, I know that they have uh, phone teams there. Yeah. So um, I'm not exactly sure. I do know that some of it is related to office. Um, sorry, don't call it office anymore. Microsoft 365. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got to get your branding changes. I'm not quite sure why they did that one though. <laughs> uh, I don't know either. I, yeah. So I see events have started to incorporate the new logo, the Microsoft 365 logo in as well. So like I was kind of <laughs> fond of the office logo. I've got the, uh, uh, I have the black t-shirt with the white letter that says step into mine and it has the office symbol. <laughs> there. It's a great t-shirt. Well, I have a, uh, a top from, would have been from about 94, 95, that is, um, says Great Plains and then Dynamics. So if anybody wants to know where the Dynamics name came from, it was all belonged to Great Plains. And wow. I quite quite proudly wore that when they announced the Dynamics name. I visited the Sydney office and I wore that top just to annoy all the uh, Navision and uh, Exapta people that were in the office. 
Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Let's, you know, going for, for folks that haven't been to Perth, I mean, Perth is, so I've been twice out there for business and have some friends in the, in the regions. And uh, at one time I had, I stayed over the weekend. It's one of those, it's, it, I, I believe it's like the most remote big city in the world. And it's, it's beautiful. And I love it. You go up, um, I don't know what the park is where you get this park and all that. Right. It's just amazing yeah. there. Uh, but I was, so I basically, you know, there over the weekend meetings on Monday and Tuesday before flying back out, there's nothing going on on the weekends in Perth. The, the um, shut down. Yeah. It, it's, it's probably better now, but Perth, uh, it can be quite quiet. It's, it's, there, there is stuff going on and um, there is stuff to do, but uh, the the central business district, the CBD, probably shuts down a lot. You'd, you'd have to go um, to some of the more active areas on the weekend or evenings. Um, I think it was so, a mistake as I was downtown and I didn't have a car. You so. could have walked to Northbridge, which is just north of the CBD, and there would have been a bit, bit of action up there. Um, so, you know, that's where the, the, the nightclubs and the restaurants and, and stuff are. So that, you know, there is, there is things happening. But Perth, you know, it's not, it's a smaller city. It's not as uh, going to be as active as something like Sydney, but then you don't live in a concrete jungle either. Right. So. Um, it's beautiful out there. I, I, so well, I live it, in the Western US, so I'm used to, you know, uh, uh, you know, hot, dry climates and, I live in right now and I'm in Salt Lake city area. So it's, it's a uh, uh, upper desert. And so mm -hmm. yeah, like flying in and some of the places that I went out, there's just beautiful. Uh, love that. But yeah, Perth can get really dry as well. I mean, it, it, it never gets free it, below zero. It never gets below freezing. Mm -hmm. um, I got to be careful when I say that because for some reason you guys in the U S use a, a, a weird scale for temperature. Um, 32. That's yeah, I, I know what I know it. I'm just teasing. Right. Yeah. Um, I just, it's, it's like the, there are, as far as I know, there's only three countries in the world that haven't, don't use the metric system. And as far as I know, they're all third world countries. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so the, um, yeah, we get, uh, it, it never gets that cold, um, but it does get quite warm. We, we hit 40, which is about a hundred, I think in Fahrenheit, um, quite often you can get, um, in the summer. Um, so we can get quite dry, but. Yeah, you mentioned Kings Park. Kings Park is great because it's it's up on a hill and you've got a view across to the, the central business district, um, but also to South Perth. Um, and basically, the um, Perth is situated around the Swan River, which is actually a flooded estuary. Um, so it's a huge expanse of inland water. Um, and we have a lot of skiing and jet skiing and sailing and kayaking and um, all kinds of water sports and, and there's cycle paths all around the river. Um, it is a, a, a great city to live in and, um, and just a great place to bring a family up. Yep. Well, what kind of, so we kind of talked a little bit already about you know, your path to becoming an MVP as far as after leaving Microsoft, but what was, what were the kinds of activities that you were involved in? I always like to ask, uh, there's always patterns of course, with the MVPs about those things, but what was it that kind of, uh, uh, that you the things that you did in the community to to get involved. So, um, for those of you who don't know me, I I should go back a little bit in time. But I've been involved with the the Great Plains now Dynamics GP product since about ninety four. Um, I worked with a company called SQL Technology f um, for five years and about ninety um, for from ninety four to ninety nine. Then I created Winthrop Development Consultant, sorry, Winthrop Dexterity Consultants, um, which was my uh, business. I ran that for two years and eventually um, I was writing, I was being a developer and writing add-ons for GP. Um, and then I sold um, uh, my products to uh, some to Microsoft, some to another ISV, and I was employed by Microsoft. Um, and I, you know, when, when the Australian GST came in, I wrote as a consultant, I wrote all of the, the specific handling for the GST. Um, and, uh, Microsoft employed me to look after that as well as the pro other products, the security related products that they purchased from me. Mm -hmm. So, um, I spent 14 years without a soul working at Microsoft. Mm -hmm. Um, it does come back. 
I, I, by the time uh, I was made redundant, um, my, I, w- I was ready for a change anyway, and I'd already planned that I would restart my old business, rebranded it as development consultant, so I didn't have to explain what dexterity was, mm-hmm. um, being the programming language behind GP, for those who don't know. Um, but I, while I was, it probably was mainly, like I was always quite involved with forums and answering questions. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, even before I joined Microsoft, I was I went to the conferences and I presented uh, some development techniques. I actually worked uh, a, a, a cross dictionary development technique out um, before it was even supported by the product. It was a bit of a hack, but it worked. And it actually opened up a way for ISVs to write code that could work with other ISVs products. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I presented that at conference sessions. For Then when I was with Microsoft for a while, I wasn't allowed to go to conferences because it didn't actually fit in with my role as far as my management was concerned. Eventually, the Fargo team asked my management, can we have David come over and present for us? And I'm so glad that they did because that basically started my journey to become an MVP Hmm. because then I started going over and presenting and my sessions were the most popular sessions at that conference. So I got invited back. (laughs) Um, So then I was started seeing the community again um, and not just being hidden away in Australia. Um, And I answered forums. And while I was at one of these conferences, I was taking a, um, a session on, uh, it was actually, I, I was a student being taught um, uh, some development techniques with Visual Studio, working with GP. And during that session, uh, the guy who was doing it um, had a blog. And every now and then, if something came up, he would just make a note to himself to blog something. Mm-hmm. And I'd always said I didn't want to be on a, do a blog. No one is interested in what I ate for breakfast. Mm-hmm. You know, um, but then I saw the difference between a, you know, a diary sort of blog and a technical blog. Mm-hmm. And that opened my eyes. And it was actually after that conference, because what I used to do is I used to have, um, you know, some articles and I used to continuously or, or, or st- um, answers written in, it was actually a notepad, but I would go look up these answers and po- repost them on forums all the time and say the same mm-hmm. things all the time. And so then sort of the, the the light bulb went off and it was like, if I write that as a blog, I can now point people to the blog and just on the right. forum, just say, yep. go have a look at this article. I think it answers your problem. And so suddenly I entered the world of blogging um, and, um, you know, it, it's quite a lot of work to write blogs, but uh, um, the, you know, it's rewarding to see people get the answers that they need. And when I go to conferences now, um, I get thank yous and acknowledgement from people saying that I've saved their bacon, which, you know, is wonderful. Um, I go to conferences to, to grow my head size. So, you know, make it home, just get it, get my head back into the plane. And, um, and that sort of lasts me another year knowing that what I'm doing is making a difference. So it basically ended up forums, blogging, presenting. um, And that was what was getting me noticed. So, and I was doing that while I was at Microsoft. Um, yeah. It wasn't part of my role. And I got hassled by my management for for doing this. And in fact, I also wrote some tools to to help the support team, which then got released publicly. And the community loved these tools. And I, my management was saying, you're spending too much time doing this stuff. But they didn't really have a, a leg to stand on because my team was meeting and exceeding goals all the time. Yeah. So, you know, as long as I could make sure that my team kept doing what they had to do and I kept doing what we had to do, um, uh, it basically meant that I could keep doing what I was doing. Um, but a lot of it had to be done in my own time because management didn't back me up. Yeah. that You know, I, so I've my blog has been going, I launched it in spring of 2004. And mm-hmm. I've changed from TypePad over to WordPress and uh, I've got it now host on Azure and thank you MVP credits for paying for everything. But uh, uh, you know, with, with all that during the time that I was with Microsoft as well, cause I had, I, 
actually had a manager who said like, I don't want you wasting your time with, with that. I'm like, <laughs> what I do on my evenings and weekends is none of your business. Exactly. And so, cause I've always used it as a way to catalog, like reading business and technical books and other interesting technologies and things that I would go and add in. So it was a, almost an extension of my memory, you know, by capturing mm -hmm. that there. But a lot of what I do, it, you brought up that point too, about how you you take notes on questions that are answered. Like the, so I do the same thing. I now use OneNote to capture all that. So I'll have all of my ideas and I'll jot down a few different notes. I'll put a link to, hey, this this uh, uh, talk by this person at this conference, they said these things and uh, you know, go check out their profile and get more information. But I'll, I'll go and capture all those things in OneNote then when I go back in, look at what do I want to write about here? And, and I'll find these pieces and be like, oh yeah, that's right. I wanted to write about this and this problem that we, I had an idea for this. And of course, I've also got the, in addition to the one note, I'm still old school, have my spiral. I, yeah, it's a little difficult to get to, but I do have a notepad with scribbles on it yep. of uh, things to, to remind me to, and I just cross them off as I get them done. Yep. I do but, the same thing. Everything has check yeah. boxes. Yep. The, um, your OneNote list. I bet you it's it, it it grows quicker than you can than you can write. It's very quick, and it's well. That's <laughs> one of the things that I do when I write. Uh, one of the first things I always do, and those that have seen these, I've, I've mentioned this a number of times, but I will often search first, like research into my own notes. Like, have I talked about it? Have I written about it? Because the other thing I do is I write my my articles, my blog posts, all within OneNote. And when they're published, I'll usually remember to put the URL for the published article, but then I'll archive that. So it's all still in OneNote. So I can go and search on my past writings as well as what's not yet been written, just my notes and find pieces. And because you know how writing is, sometimes you have a complete thought and you sit there, you can just pound it out, get that article out there completely capture everything other times you, you have a few different thoughts and it's best to not try to force it but just walk away from it come back when you have some other thoughts about that thing and one note is filled with those partial thoughts uh, <laughs> and it's so it's great to be able to capture it and have that place and it's in the cloud so i can access that whether i'm on the road or or at home and and often I'll go and I'll find pieces and I'll be like, I completely forgot that I had written on a topic that I'm now interested in, uh, in writing about. And so I can leverage those other notes. It's been a great resource for me. Yeah. I, I suppose my, my writings, uh, uh, are focused on GP tricks and development skill, things that I've learned. They're focused on stuff related to my product range and, and, um, one of my products has development capabilities. So I publish lots of samples of the things that you can do with it. Then people can download those for free if they've got my tools. Mm -hmm. um, and I, then the other thing it, that gets covered is, is my hobbies. So yeah, I did want to copy that. The, the couple of minutes we have left, we have to have to share. I, so I, we were talking before we hit record. So I'm aware of what's happening here, but uh, so talk about your hobbies. Okay, so I mean, I uh, I used to DJ, but that doesn't happen very much. But if you were to come to my house, I have got lighting, lasers, and lights, and smoke machine, and all kinds of fun stuff like that. Did we but even get into that? Because that was we didn't get into that one before. I've got a huge, I have a massive music collection. So I I have uh, 120 kilos of vinyl in six boxes, yeah. um, all dance 12 inch remixes. Yeah, I have um, and I have. I'm, I have SL twelve hundred guy, so it's all dance. I used to DJ, so same. Yeah, I I have SL twelve hundred turntables and a mixer, um, but I do it all digitally now. I've got uh, virtual DJ and uh, a, a USB deck that allows me to do all the scratching mm -hmm. and stuff, so I don't have to try and try and scratch with a mouse. It doesn't work. Um, <laughs> so, but the yeah, that that doesn't happen all that often now. Um, but uh, what what I'm the other things I'm involved with is robotics. So um, my kids got involved with the robotics um, club at school, and uh, the, that was involved in entering a competition called RoboCup Junior. So the Australian branch of that. So there is RoboCup Junior in the US, mm 
mm-hmm. um, and uh, uh, basically uh, as a parent or mentor, you're not allowed to do anything. You, you can give ideas, but there's no doing. You can, you know, you're not allowed to touch. Yeah. Um, and so I, a lot of the robots were built with Lego Mindstorms. And uh, so I ended up buying my own Lego Mindstorms sets so I could play with my ideas. Um, I've always loved Lego. Um, I have Lego models in upstairs that are what I built when I was 15 that I have never taken apart. Hmm. Um, and uh, so this gave me a chance to combine my love of Lego and my love of programming to create autonomous robots. Um, and uh, the the robots have to perform various challenges in the RoboCup competition. Now, I can't compete. It's only for school age kids from primary and secondary age kids. Um, but by me playing with my own robots um, and trying to achieve, do the challenges, it means that I can mentor um, and even though my kids are well and truly grown up and finish uni and in the workforce, um, I still mentor for the school that they went to. Um, and we can show you some of the robots. I did go grab them. <laughs> <laughs> so we, I'll show you these two very quickly. These are actually sumo bots. So um, this is not for Robo, um, RoboCup as such. This is what we start our kids with. And it's basically... Um, they don't need to do any programming because the code's already in the in the brick for them, but they just need to build a robot that has to push another robot out of a um, a circle as a sumo competition, um, and that's just a really good way to get the kids introduced to the robotics club, um, having some fun, um, and uh, um, basically get their interest peaked. So we do that for the first uh, few terms. Um, and then after that, they shift into um, doing actual um, uh, RoboCup, which it can either be rescue or on stage, which is dancing robots. We don't actually do the soccer robots, even though there is a soccer competition as well. Hmm. So, but the the robots, um, so this is using one of the, the newer Lego um, Spike Mindstorms kits. Um, but this is a line following robot. So we can see light sensors to follow the line. Uh, it's got a touch sensor so it can see if there's um, an obstacle directly in front. Um, and once it gets to the rescue zone, it needs to ha- it uses ultrasonic to um, locate uh, the victim, which is a soft drink can. Um, and then it has the uh, uh, a claw that can come over and then drag the can out of the danger zone. Yeah. Um, so that that's... So, but then we can go, um, so that this one is a little bit more complex. So a lot of similarities, still has the touch sensors, but they, they're floating so they can go over bumps. Mm-hmm. Um, this one again has an ultrasonic sensor and a touch sensor. The claw mechanism on this one though, is more interesting because let's see if we can oh, wow. show you sideways. Yeah. It is designed to be able to actually um, grab the can and lift it yeah. up. Yeah. Um, and place it on a block, which is a requirement of the adv- the open division of the competition. So, um, and this one is re- created with uh, an EV3 Mindstorms brick. So, and ah, I've got a, a tracked robot, similar sort of design. Um, this has got tracks and it's got a, a spring loaded. Um, and you've got sort of, I don't know, you can see these guys sort of swivel to be able to go over rough surfaces. Um, it has a, a claw mechanism, which also can do the lifting. Um, um, and this one actually, um, it does have on the back, um, even though it's on oh, that way, it does have on the back a claw, um, sorry, a sensor so that this is gonna lift in a second. The, yeah, it started there out. Yep. There we go. That one lifts, but this sensor on the back, it's not part of the actual robot for the competition. But if I turn it round and turn it up and I pull this guy off, um, I have a little remote control and I can actually drive this guy around as remote control, but that's not allowed in the competition because in the competition, everything has to be autonomous. Mm. But it just gave me, it was like a little bit more programming when it's in standby, I can drive it around like a remote control car. <laughs> Very cool. So... 
I think I'll show you one last one. This one, is, there's a video of this on YouTube um, because this is using mechanum wheels. So I don't know if you can see, but the wheels themselves are made up of rollers at 45 degrees. Yeah. Um, this robot can move in any direction. Um, so it can it can rotate, it can move sideways, it can basically move in any direction. And I wrote create um I wrote a test for it, um, which is what you see running on the uh, the YouTube video of it. Pretty well being a dancing robot because it can just move any way at once. But yeah. this one was created for the maze competition where you're not following a line but are following walls um, and locating victims. And it has. Uh, a sensor array with ultrasonic heat and uh, an optical camera. Um, so this is getting a little bit more complex. So this is probably about $1,200 worth of Lego. Wow. Um, so <laughs> it's yeah, I, it's a I lot of fun. A, I know there's a few people, like I'm over in the, uh, it was originally a SharePoint MVP, and there's a, there's a few uh, folks over in, uh, and this side of the MVP world that are really into Legos and robotics and and just a few of those things. And I know uh, they spend a lot of money. There, the there's a, a gentleman who's an MVP called Lars Clint, and he he has an amazing Lego collection that he has posted videos on. Um, and he has a whole room dedicated to Lego. Um, in our new house, I wasn't able to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that that would have pushed the uh the marital boundaries a little too far yeah i've already uh i i'm my my wife uh is constantly uh, uh accusing me of being a hoarder and i'm just like look i i'm in a small space i collect music uh, and i have music instruments as well and uh so she's like well you have to pick one when we move to the new beautiful place you're not gonna bring all oh, that's, the junk that's with not you. fair yeah. Tell, how many kids have you got? <laughs> Four, but they're all gone. They're all adults. Oh, okay. You, you'll have to tell her that's like asking her when the kids were at home to choose one and leave the other right. three behind. I, I know. <laughs> yeah. That's just not, that's not fair. Yeah. Which is so, why the, it's why I'm relegated to the basement now. So it's contained all in one space. But yeah. So I do have also this is a remote control toy. So this one's not autonomous. It's got no no programming on it, but it's. um remote control car with four wheel drive, four wheel steering, fully independent suspension. And uh, it a can shoot ball. weapon. That's right. Yeah, okay. it was, why not? Right, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, I, I, I don't actually have that much in the way of just general Lego models. Most of my models that I have are related to robots. Um, or in this case, I, I wanted to try some remote control cars. You drive them with the phone, so. They're good fun. Yeah, good fun. Well, David, really appreciate your taking the time today and uh, showing us some of your uh, so your robots and but <laughs> giving us also a picture of uh, of your MVP experience for folks that want to get in touch or reach out to you. What are the best ways to reach you? Um, well, on Twitter, I'm Winthrop DC. Um, on uh, I'm, if you search my name, David Musgrave, you'll find me anywhere. Um, my email address is just david at winthropdc.com. I'm my blog, uh, winthropdc.com slash blog. Uh, yeah, it's it's all very easy to find me. Um, um, yeah, if you've you know Googled yourself with Bing, you'll quite happily see, you, <laughs> you know, you turn up everywhere. Yep, of course. Well, David, thanks so much for your time. And, and uh, I know that uh, I, we're not, we're, I think we're in another year of virtual uh, um, MVP summit uh, again, but, uh, you know, I, I want the world soon. Yeah. I would love to, to come to MVP summit. I just need to be able to justify expensive trips. I, I my trip to uh community summit this year cost me $9,000 in flights. So that's, yep. <laughs> yeah, that that's just Passionate ridiculous community guy to do that. So, yeah. And I wasn't flying business or first, you know, yeah. <laughs> Well, thanks so much for your time, David. All right. Catch you later.